we love in the pro-life movement to talk about Mary and how she was facing this unplanned pregnancy, right? Unplanned from her perspective, and she chose life. But when you say, well, what did God do to make sure that Mary's unplanned pregnancy wasn't a crisis pregnancy? What did he do? Well, he sent an angel to Joseph. And Joseph, in many ways, had a similar dilemma as any abortion-minded man, right? He wanted to put Mary away quietly, which really was sort of a cultural abortion. And what was Joseph called to do? The first thing the angel said to Joseph was to do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. In other words, the sanctity of marriage and family was the first thing, that narrative. And then he was told who Jesus was. So you have the sanctity of marriage, and then you have the sanctity of life. And so what we try to do at CareNet, particularly as a Christian organization, is link those two things together. Never talk about the sanctity of life without talking about the sanctity of marriage. And of course, linked in there is the important role that fathers play in, in this whole decision. And one of the things that's inspired me about the role that Joseph played was that he didn't have just an individual responsibility. He also had a community responsibility. Because what Joseph was actually doing is he was, he was protecting the Christ child, not just for himself, but for the overall community. Because that's one of the things that the angel told Joseph, that, that he would be the savior of the world. So as men, we have an individual responsibility, certainly be husbands and fathers um, in, in that situation where we're challenged there. But also, we have a community responsibility to be sort of, I call it the proverbial community Joseph for the, for the proverbial Marys out in the world that may be facing an unplanned pregnancy. We all have a role where we can step in. We can encourage a guy who may be tempted to run away from his responsibility. We can come alongside uh, you know, women who may be single moms and, and provide that kind of support. We can be father figures for kids who are growing up without dads. But we should be fully engaged uh, in this issue because, again, this isn't just a women's issue. It's a men's issue. It's a family issue. It's an issue of life. And men are certainly as involved in anything that has to do with life as women are. And that's the reason I encourage men to be very proactive around this particular issue. Because everyone knows, well, Jesus could have come into the world via a single mother. Scripture said he'd be born of a virgin, but he didn't say a married virgin. But God had this, this, this perfect structure, this, this situation where they were in a covenant relationship where he brought the father into the picture to be a, a husband to her and a father to the child growing inside of her. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, that's, those are the marching orders for us uh, in the pro-life movement to always link those things together. Because when you do that, not only do you save the child, but you also break a cycle that could happen where a child could then be at risk for abortion, where a family could be broken down. Uh, in, in a way that also structures the situation for abortion again. And understanding that, that means that you've got fathers and mothers united together, loving each other, loving their child, and ideally loving God.